Well, we are back with another puppet lunch break and I promised you chickens today and that's what I've brought. Now the chickens I have are for a show where the puppeteers are seen during most of the performance. So the puppeteers are visible while they're holding the chickens. During the show, I actually wear a special um, costume that has, that has colors in it that this will contrast nicely against. And so this is one of the chickens that is used in the show. This is actually the one I operate. And this chicken is actually modeled after a real kind of chicken. So one of the things I have to do before I build a puppet is I do a little bit of research and I have to figure out how my puppets need to look. And so I researched and found that there's a kind of chicken called a Dominique hen. And a Dominique hen has this lovely black and white patterning all over it. So I went into a fabric store. I found fabric that really looked most like the Dominique hen. The puppet moves by two rods. There is a tube, PVC tube, that is connected to the body. And then there's this other rod that runs through the tube. So think of the tube like a straw. So this other stick or rod runs inside of it. I can turn the head left and right by moving this rod on the bottom left and right. I wanted this chicken to look a little bit, well, maybe a, 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 just, a, just a tiny bit kind of crazy. And so I gave her these really, really wide eyes and um, her head does this neat thing when she turns, this comb thing flips up a little bit. And um, that was a happy accident. Last week I mentioned uh, that sometimes when I'm operating a puppet, I find something neat it does that I didn't even plan for it to do. So that was one of those neat things that it could do. The wings, and these little tail feathers in the back are actually made from feather boa that I found like this, black and white to match. And inside the neck here, if you remember from last week, one of my favorite, favorite things to incorporate in my puppet building, there is a slinky that runs inside the neck and that slinky helps to hold the shape of the neck. Now, this show that this puppet is in actually has a whole lot of different chickens. So I'm gonna show you one of the other chickens and this chicken looks very different. This chicken is, is a bit more serious than the other one, uh, a little bit nervous all the time and it's modeled after a kind of chicken and I'm blanking on the type of name that actually does have this, this crazy poop of feathers on top of its head. So I had a lot of fun researching chickens to figure out what kinds of chickens I wanted to have in the show. Once again, I've got a slinky inside the neck right here, holding the shape out. And the body is again moved by moving my hand and moving this lower rod. And then this uh, other rod is controlling the top part of the head. So this is another kind of frenetic chicken, a little bit frantic, but 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 a bit more, uh, more serious. So, if you look at this puppet and you compare the eyes, the eyes are very different from the first puppet that I showed. So the first puppet has these like really wide eyes that just pop out. They don't have any lids on them at all. And the second puppet, I did put lids on it because I didn't want, want her to have this sort of pop-eyed kind of look. So you can do a whole lot of things by how you position the eyes to give a puppet character. And, uh, and the different material choices you make. Um, also, the neck on this one is a lot longer, and uh, this one is, is, is a little bit more, more, more plump. So she is uh, just a plumper, plumper chicken. But, uh, but it was fun trying to figure out how to make the puppets, even though they are both chickens, look very, very different. So researching is something I do a whole lot with, looking at different images to find something that sort of matches what I think the character of the character, the character of the character, I can say that, what the character of the character should look like or what kind of personality it might have. And so the eyes are a big part of that. It's a really important part of the puppet design is thinking about how the eyes go. And actually, this is something neat to know. The eyes are usually something that I put on the puppet last. So I will make the entire puppet all the rest of the parts and the eyes are the thing that I'm actually adding in last. 
But before I add them in, I usually do a whole bunch of drawings about how I want the eyes to look. And then after I get the beak positioned and the other little details positioned, then I finally put the eyes into place. So they really are the finishing touch on pretty much all the puppets that I make. But, um, but thank you so much for uh, tuning in today for another puppet lunch break. I will be back tomorrow with more chickens and birds. The, uh, <laughs> because there are more. And a little bit of information about something that we use in puppetry a lot called perspective. So that'll be our like big $5 word for tomorrow. But thank you for tuning in today and I'll see you tomorrow for puppet lunch break.